Hi, in this video, what I want to do is show you how to use Polya's four step approach to problem solving. In mathematics, problem solving is a very important process. It's also something that's important in the real world. So sometimes you can apply some of the things that you are learning in a math class to the real world situation. This is one of many different ways of problem solving. So this is not the only approach, but this is one of them. So I wanted to walk you through Polya's four step approach. The first step is to understand the problem. When you're understanding the problem, you're first gonna read through the problem, see what's happening. Then you're going to figure out what information you are given, what information you're trying to find. Sometimes when you're reading through the problem, you realize that they didn't give you any, enough information, that maybe there's information missing. So you really want to understand exactly what is being asked, because I can tell you, I've seen a lot of students throughout my teaching career that they solve what they think is asked, but they didn't actually solve what was asked for. So it's always important to understand exactly what is being asked and making sure that you are solving that problem. Step two is to come up with a plan. What are you going to do? Think through some things that you might be able to do. Do I need to subtract? Do I need to add? Could I possibly create a table? Could I use deductive reasoning? Can I go through and find different things to help carry out the plan? Uh, what information do I need? And then step three, you're actually going to carry out that plan and solve the problem. This is where you do the actual math and you figure out what the answer is going to be. And then step four, it's always a good idea to look back and check your answer, make sure that you answered the correct thing. Um, that you solved exactly what was being asked of you. So let's look at an example using Polya's four-step approach. Uh, for this one, we are paying, by paying a payment of $200 up front and $50 per week, how long would it take to pay for a laptop in full that costs $1,300? So step one, remember, is to understand the problem. So this is where we look at the information that we know, we're trying to figure out what we're trying to get to. So we know that we paid $200 towards that a total amount upfront. So we've already paid 200 of the $1,300, okay? We also know that we are going to pay $50 per week until we've paid off the full amount. And so our total amount that we are trying to pay back is $1,300. So notice when I was going through the understanding, I pulled out the important information from the problem and figured out exactly what we're looking for. So we're trying to find the number of weeks until it is paid off. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how many weeks it is going to take to pay off the $1,300 laptop. Okay, so step two is to come up with a plan. So we're going to devise a plan. We're not going to solve. We're just going to look at what we need to do. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to figure out how much is left to pay off. So that's the first thing that we need to do. How much is left to pay off? And mathematically, that means that we are going to subtract the $200 from the original cost. And then we are going to divide the remaining amount by the $50 per week. Okay, so that's our plan to figure out how much and or how long it is going to take to pay off the $1,300. So step three, we're actually going to carry out our plan. So remember, so 
So the first thing that we're going to do, like I said, is we're gonna figure out how much is left to pay off. So we would take our $1,300 and subtract the $200 that we've already paid. And so we know that we have $1,100 remaining. It is important to keep in mind what your units you're working with so that you end up with the correct units. We should end up with weeks as our correct units. We're figuring out uh, the $1,100, that's going to cancel out the dollars with the $50 per week when we divide. So our second part was to divide the remaining amount. So we're going to take and we're gonna do 1,100 And we're going to divide that by $50 per week. Technically, you don't have to put it this way. We want units of week at the top. So remember that when you're dividing by a fraction, technically this is a fraction because it's $50 per one week. So when you divide by a fraction, you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal. So we would do 1,100 times one week per $50. So we're technically dividing by the 50, and then the weeks ends up on the top, so we have the units that we want. Our dollar amount cancels out. So you would simply just do 1,100 divided by 50, which ends up being 22 weeks. So it is going to take us 22 weeks to pay off the remaining amount. So approximately um, a little over five months or five and a half months if there's four weeks per month. So it's about five and a half months for you to pay this off. All right, the final step is to check. Okay, so let's look through and kind of work backwards. We know we've already paid $200. Okay, um, and then we are going to pay $50 per week for 22 weeks. So basically what's gonna happen is the weeks are gonna cancel out and we are going to end up with the amount. And if we simplify this math, you plug it into a calculator, you do end up with $1,300, and we can see that the laptop is paid off in full after the 22 weeks. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.